right, so we'll call the meeting to order at 724 in accordance with the open meeting law. The board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM <coughs> and may be recorded by other local media. We're also being recorded on Zoom on our online platform. If you could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to In Person. This is an interesting little hybrid meeting we're having tonight. And so we're going to get right into things, and, and we're going to go to public comment. Is there anybody here? For public comment? No. And anybody online, Mr. Gilberto, that wants to speak for public comment? Seeing none? I'm not seeing any. All right. I don't I don't know. I have a feeling Mr. Magazine may be here to, to speak on an issue that's not on the agenda, so he may wish to speak on. You nope. want to hit continue on the screen, Mike, so we can get that. <coughs> Maybe it's in the chat. You have like multiple computers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just going to be patient as we figure this. Figuring it out. Figure this out. <coughs> oh, I Mid see. It. Is there a chat? Is there a hand like raised in the chat? Yeah. No. Message. Like Those are you know that there's no sound. Oh. Mr. Magazine, can you hear me? I can. And we can hear you as well. I can, I can come down there in five minutes and make a difference. We Were can, you here to speak? Um, do you provide public comment to the board? Is this the right point of the meeting for this? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. At CSM, I'm here tonight to uh, get an update on the process we started pre COVID. Uh, I've been waiting a long time to uh, purchase the town, town land so that I can build my town of house. And, you know, I have the lot there, but this works a lot better with the town owned land. And um, that's what I'm here for. Okay, so you were just looking for an update. You weren't here to provide public comment. You were just asking a question about something? I, I didn't see, see where it was on the agenda for tonight, so I guess this is the, the point. I bring it up. Is okay. That correct? It it isn't actually on the agenda for an update. So. Okay. So, what, what time is it on the agenda? It isn't. No, it isn't on the agenda. But we can still note your comment about that you're making an inquiry about where it's at in the process. So. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> just, just as a follow up, Madam Chair. Sure, Mr. O'Leary. Where are we at with the, uh, yeah, this was up on Poplar Terrace, I think, in that area. Old Anna Road, Poplar yeah. Terrace. Right. So where are we in the process, not just on this one, but I, the board took um, positive action on putting town owned land up for sale prior to COVID. Um, and I understand how quite it delayed. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. I mean, right. if so you're looking for an update way. to say we've reinvigorated the process, you're not going to get that update, and neither is Mr. Magazu, because well, we, we haven't the, done anything in terms of auctioning land off. So, But what I think we can do is have it as an agenda item in an upcoming hearing, and especially the ones that we took action on, 
um, that we can move forward in the process. We can provide an update at the next meeting or if there's anything further. I don't even know if you prepared Mr. Gilberto to talk about it, but um, clearly there were there was a halting of a lot of things during COVID. No, I, so, I understand. But yeah. again, the, door, the board took uh, positive action on some specific parcels. Uh, we have a little bit Sure, you're, we you're, can take so a look at that then. So what, what, uh, what we can, can we, we can take a look at that list can again, I Mr. O'Leary. Where we're at in the process is your question? Well, let me ask it. Yes, where That's, are we I at think in the process and then what is it. the timeline associated with when we can give these people an update as to when the action is going to take place? And I'm not sure if they've if you have updated them on that, Mr. Gilberto, or even if you're prepared to update the board as to that process and if you're not we'll put it on an agenda for another meeting madam chair through you so th there were a number of parcels that were approved for uh, auction pre-covid um, as we just described or has just been uh, discussed um, there were also parcels where the board desired to see that adjacent town and land be included and that and my recollection is that some of that is not yet authorized for auction so our intention is that the agenda, at an agenda which during which time will allow, go through all of those with the board and review which ones need to be coupled with another parcel to be sold. And I'm not, I'm not even certain that this is one of those, but right. I, my recollection is it may have been. Um, but our thought was to put on the, the general issue of the town owned land and to clarify all this and take the appropriate action moving forward after that. Sure. Um, there were two parcels that were auctioned back in October, November. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the board remembers. Those, par th those were parcels where we had directed the owners to draw a plan, go to the planning commission, expend money. We wanted to make a poll on that. You know, these are obviously important requests, but we're not quite at that point in the, uh, in the, in the process. But uh, I think our hope, Madam Chair, through you is that we could have it on the agenda for June 12th, assuming there isn't anything else that July, sure. July 12th, July 12th excuse great. me, thank you. June 12th of next year yeah. might work too. But no, that would be great. I, and that's why I don't mean to put you on the spot, sure. which I feel like this is doing because because we don't have it on the agenda. But Madam I Chief. don't mean to put you on the spot, so I appreciate your update on it. But we can certainly address it at the next meeting and go over those. I don't even remember the addresses of those parcels. I believe that was pre-virtual meetings. It was. It was so yeah. long ago. Yeah, it was. So I don't, my memory isn't that is not going to be that far back on it. So. Madam Chair, through you, I see Mr. Maggie's his hand has gone up again. Uh, this started over three years ago, and we're at, at the final step. And uh, town went to their attorney to modify the uh, thing at the end. You know, not, not for nothing, but during COVID, you checked my taxes on my piece of land that was well under a thousand dollars and it can now like forty five hundred dollars a year. So now I'm sitting on a piece of land that then I've spent two two years at nine thousand dollars for you know, which wasn't that way before. So, you know, I, I, I own answering yours and Mr. O'Leary's question on the, where we're at. I think what we are planning to do is review everything at the next board meeting, the, the next upcoming meeting, because we have to evaluate and examine not just this but the other parcels. But yours sounds to me like, even though I don't remember this very well, it moved forward, it was moved forward in the list of parcels that was approved for sale. But we would, I, I don't have, um, a recollection enough to knowledge if we speak about that at this point, nor is it on the agenda this evening. So we'll put it on the agenda for that review for our next hearing. Um, excuse me, next meeting. Okay? So, thank you. Good. Is there anyone else? Michael, that... I'm not, you, I'm not seeing Gilberto, any. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Madam Chair, I don't see any. All right. 
And so we want to move on <coughs> to our next order of business now, which is a proclamation lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer pride month. And there is a motion in the packet to be able to read the proclamation. And if we could, if we could um, at least take that motion, and I'd ask Mr. Walner, if, if the board approves the reading of the proclamation, I'd ask Mr. Walner to read it. Uh, for us, since okay. he was instrumental in bringing this item <coughs> forward to the board. A little deviation from the norm. So. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gilbert, is there anything you want to add in terms of this agenda item? No. All right. So do we have a, how about we start with that motion? And then I have one question. Sure. Do you want me to ask deliberate the, the motion? Okay. So, sure, sir. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to proclaim June 2021 as Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Queer Pride Month in North Reading and to read the attached proclamation. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Discussion. Mr. Studo? Um, I just had a question. In general, just, this is not even relative to this, but um, how, um, how often do we do proclamations at the town level? I'm just not familiar with that. Meaning, is there a criteria we hit? Um, that I think we got. I'd have to turn to the TA on. Madam Chair, if you have any information with regard to that, to the best that I can, uh, I can answer the question. Um, we generally, you know, if I had to estimate, I would say four or five times during the course of the year, we do some sort of a proclamation. Maybe more, and it depends upon whether it's for um, a particular uh, local event or um, declaring a month for a particular purpose. Um, candidly, um, I, I'm not aware of any criteria, but uh, candidly, I've not reviewed closely the board's policy or any bylaws to see if there's any criteria that are out there. Um, I'm pretty sure the last one that we did as a board was dollars for scholars. Prior to that, we did a senior mm -hmm. proclamation. And Sounds great. Prior to that, I don't remember what we did prior we, to We've that. done North Writing Night Off as well, mm -hmm. um, as well when, when okay. we've done that, um, the last one being two years ago. Okay. So if there's like a, like on the monthly one, so if there's like a group or cause that North Reading wants to support, right, something like that, is that what I mean? I'm just trying to get clarity, meaning that, I, you know, I, I just didn't know what, again, if, if there's no criteria, that was my just main question. Like, you know, like, like there's North Reading, by the way, I'm, I'm making an example now because I'm Italian. But this North Reading like declared Italian American Month just like the federal government does, meaning if somebody wanted to do that, do we automatically say yes or do we say no, there's not enough people that want it? That, that's my kind of question. I just didn't know what. So you answered it though. So there is no criteria, it's just whatever the board's pleasure is when it comes up. I, I would fair? just caveat that by saying I, I have not reviewed the board's policy okay. with regard to this, and so I, I, I just I can't speak to that part of it. That's answered. Any Thank you. Questions? I have a question. Mrs. Gonzalez. Have we ever done a proclamation for the veterans? Um, I believe we do for Veterans Day, for if day. I, if I remember co correctly. I, I don't have that in front of me, and as some of you know, I had a massive computer problem heading into this meeting this evening. Um, but uh, I, I know we, that, that the veterans agent asked us to approve uh, to consider a proclamation um, in recognition of Veterans Day. I, I don't I don't recall that it says month, but um, I know we are asked for Veterans Day at least. So I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just gonna make a personal statement for myself um, because my aunt is a veteran and um, a gay woman um, who I highly respect. And I had a conversation with her a while back, so I called her today. She lives in Alaska. I had to wait until the time was right <laughs> um, to discuss this. And because uh, my feeling is I would really like to see a Veterans Month before any other month. Um, if they don't have one, I don't really feel real good about supporting anything else um, before that. Happy to support a day, because they have a day. Um, but a month, I'd like to see the veterans have it, and that's just personal for me. Any other questions or comments? Or? Speaking from the chair, I don't, I, you know, I appreciate that. I just don't necessarily think it's dispositive of, of how we should vote on this proclamation. I think it's, um, I think uh, we have a veterans department that's devoted to veterans. And, and I'll I work think on that her. that's a, 
I'll, I'll work on that. I'll, I think I'll, it's a great. I, will. I think it's a great idea if we if we can, you know, research even months or weeks that might be devoted to veterans issues. I think that that's a great idea, and we should get behind that. We, we have we do have a department that mm -hmm. you know we we do devote um, town resources to veterans, and we try as a board. We try as a board collectively to to devote resources and more resources if we can. So I think that that's important. But I also think it's important for us to take a stand and make these types of proclamations, especially in our community, to be a more inclusive community. And I think this is a, an extremely important one. I don't know if um, anyone else wants to speak about <coughs> that as we deliberate whether or not to yeah. approve reading of the proclamation. But I think it's, it's important for us to do this as a town that's just my that's my opinion. And I agree. And I, representing the citizens of North And I agree. I, I, if it were a, and if it's a day, just like the veterans have, I will wholeheartedly support it. Mm -hmm. And having that conversation with my aunt, she felt the same way. I ran it by her. I wanted her opinion. And she felt the same way as a veteran. She feels that that should come first. Anything else, Mr. Uh -huh. Studo? And I will add, like so. Um, I'm in support of this. I, again, uh, for my generation, this is second nature. It is, it's just, you know, we grew up with, like, this wasn't a not, this just wasn't something I had to be concerned with because, like, we were just already, I, I guess I just was part of a generation that accepted it. It was just, you know what I mean? It's second nature. You had friends, everybody. So we didn't need this per se. But I will say from, from my cynical standpoint on proclamations in general, I just don't want someone to come out of left field and take advantage of us and say, hey, because you approve this, you better approve right. that. So that's what I'm just saying, that because we do live in a tit-for-tat world, so I'll just add that. And again, like I said, when I see this, it's like, so I'm just proclaiming something that I've already believed in forever, just because, again, I'm not trying to call myself the youngest one on this board. <laughs> like you always do. You know, so I always do. So, but that's what right. I'll, I'll stay with. Thank you. Uh, um, and, uh, and I don't know any other comments, questions? Thoughts? Good. Yeah. Nice I think it's a. I think it's a good idea. I, I'm glad you were able to bring it forward, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to take a vote on it. And again, this isn't something that the, the town of North Reading is necessarily coming up with. This isn't novel. Um, federal government takes positions on these things and proclaims certain months, and uh, certain other organizations. Uh, you know. And I don't necessarily draw a correlation between the veterans and, and this particular organization. Uh, again, veterans, we, we provide a significant amount of resources uh, throughout the year uh, here in North Reading. As we should. Veterans Day is a national holiday. Um, and again, you know, we want to proclaim November because Veterans Day falls in there as a Veterans Month. I'm, I'm good with that too. Uh, but I think in this particular case, in this particular um, proclamation, I, I think it's uh, timely. I think it's necessary and I think it uh, helps uh, put an exclamation point after uh, an issue. So I, I think it's a great idea and I look forward to supporting. Okay, anything else? Great. All right, so we have a motion and we have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No. It's unanimous. And I would ask, because Mr. Walner was really the one that was instrumental in drawing this um, uh, matter wait, to wait, our wait. attention. Hold on. I was not Mr. She was opposed, so it's not unanimous. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I thought I heard. I didn't. I didn't announce it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Four in favor. One opposed. I, I apologize for that. I accept your apology. Um, and Mr. Wong, would you please do the honor of reading the proclamation sure. for Happy us? Sure, uh, Lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer, Pride Month proclamation. Whereas we recognize June 2021 as Pride Month throughout the United States and the world, we're reminded of what makes our community great, our remarkable capacity to accept and embrace the lives of others, regardless of our differences. In this regard, we stand together with the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer community as they declare their pride in who they are and whom they love. The LGBT community, sorry.
Could you read that? <laughs> could, you, could you read that? Continue read, please. Thank you. The LGBTQ community has worked tirelessly for respect, equality, and their very right to exist. While there has been remarkable progress towards acceptance and equality in recent years, members of the LGBTQ community still face an unacceptable level of discrimination. We must push back against those who threaten LGBTQ people, and we must continue to make the case that all human beings share something fundamental in common. All of us want to love and be loved. Therefore, be it resolved, we are proud to support our LGBTQ community, community's right to live, in their, live their lives out loud. We celebrate pride. We must continue to demand equal rights for all. Therefore, be it further resolved, the select board members do hereby proclaim June 2021 to be Pride Month for the LGBTQ community in North Reading. And therefore, be it further resolved, we encourage all residents to celebrate our pride and diverse LGBTQ community through a parade, decorations, and moral support that reflects well on our town in support of our LGBTQ neighbors. And we recognize LGBTQ residents whose influential and lasting contributions to our neighborhoods have made North Reading a vibrant community in which, in which to live, work, and play. Signed, Catherine Manupelli, Chairperson Select Board. Proclaim this the 21st day, June 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. Appreciate it. Thank you to both of you for reading it. And um, we did, there, there was a uh, parade sponsor, too, that happened. Uh, I forget what day. Yeah. Do you sign that and then put it? I know I, this is out. She'll I give it back to me. She'll give it back. You don't have a pen? Oh, you don't have a pen? I do. I, do. Oh, I, do. I have to maintain order so, here. She's got there. it. And, um, can you talk? Yeah. I do all the time. Can you talk? Okay. Sorry. Too many things on my desk. All right. So thank you for that. And any other, any further comment? Any further discussion on that? We're Just all the parade was a great uh, turnout. There was a lot of supporters. And um, there was a request for a flag raising as well, but we don't have the, um, the equipment to be able to do that. So I think the offer of the town is if anybody wants to bring out some colored lights to the gazebo, we could entertain that. And they should go to the town administrator. Correct. Right. And we do have a policy on flag raising to that point. Oh, okay. That is, it's pretty specific and particular. Um, with regard to what, you know, flags, we have two flags, the American flag and the uh, Veterans Memorial flag, and a specific policy on that, so. Um, but again, the, in, the thought was, just like the blue lights um, were all on the gazebo, that perhaps rainbow, because rainbow is symbolic of gay pride, that perhaps someone could come forward and we could put, we could add through the town administrator with rainbow lights. I don't know if they make them. But I'm, I'm sure, sure they do. Right. A few colors would go a long way. Sure. <laughs> so that's the idea. Just be a nice, another nice symbolic yeah. gesture. Probably could even get them laid up for rainbow. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And this is the support of people who don't feel support. Yes. High school. And up. Yes. Yeah. And for the record, I, oh, I was all for a day, just not a month. <laughs> So, and then we're going to expect to see something from you on veterans. Yes, you will. We're all for that as well. Yes, you will. Okay. Thank you for your indulgence. And and I, will, I will just say, I'll just make a final comment because I often have middle schoolers, sometimes high schoolers who don't yet drive their own cars, but this is, like Mr. O'Leary said, timely. It's important for us to do it because as, uh, you know, as far advanced, so to speak, as we think we might be, you know, even the older ones on this board. Uh, <laughs> I there's a lot of things old. that, there's a lot of undercurrent in this town that we might not be in tune with that your, our children bring up to us. And this is one of those issues where I think it's very important for us as the representatives of the town to stand forward on this. And I don't necessarily think every single one of these issues that you know, comes forward is something that the citizens of the town want us to stand stand up for, but I think this is certainly one that they do. So, so thank right. you to, to well said. Forward. All right, so we're going to move on to our 2021 Youth Corps 
measurement survey results. We have our, you know, superstar Amy Luxgoods here who can tell us a lot about the youth in the community and where they are at. So we're happy to hear from you. Welcome. Thank you. Shall I just um, activate this? I do have a PowerPoint today. Madam Chair, through you to NORCAM. Can we hear? Yes, she has a microphone. Okay. That's okay. laid in front of her. Uh, Amy, if I could just remind you to just speak up because sure. the Zoom participants need to hear through that speakerphone. Oh. And um, Phil, you guys are going to zoom in on a screen for the PowerPoint presentation. Oh, no, we're actually the PowerPoint. We, we have it. You have it. You're good. Yeah, great. Yeah, good go. Awesome. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. As you all know, every year as part of our Federal Drug Free Communities Grant, um, we take measurements about how youth uh, view drugs, um, use drugs, and other attitudes related to substances. Um, we are in our fifth year. I can't believe how fast that went by. We have just three months left on our federal, uh, federal grant. This flew by. Um, I'm sure Mr. Guerrero updated everybody that we did submit a renewal. It'll be uh, valid for five more years if we get it, but we don't find out until August. Um, one of the significant changes that happened in this year was that our grant was transferred to the CDC under the uh, prevention department. So I just like to make everybody aware of that because there were some uh, administrative changes that came along with that. So. We are um, happy to report some really great news tonight. And so this is kind of the culmination of five years, but maybe a little bit more, more than that, because we had to take some baseline data back in 2017. So um, every year we approach grades uh, 6 through 12 and partner with the school committee uh, and the school administrators on collecting this information. So that's what I'm here to report back to you today. Um, and the number one question I got asked during COVID was, are kids using more or less during COVID? And I'm here to answer that for you today. Because before, I would just say, I don't know. I don't see them. I don't know. There's no way for me to know that until we get this information back. So um, it, it's been a real interesting set of uh, data. Um, one thing I want to point out is that you'll see the participant level down in grade 11. And that was because the high school administration decided to um, collect information just on one of the upper grades. They have assured me that next year it'll go back to full participation. Um, so those two people who, uh, those two juniors who responded, thank you, but um, unfortunately it's not valid, valid data for us. So on the information that I'm going to report back to you, just keep in mind the, the why that's going to be right is because for us that's obviously not statistically valid. So let's start with alcohol use. And I did want to put the graphics right up there with the data, with the, um, the data set. And you'll, can see, you'll see a trend down. This is a really big deal for us. Um, one thing I want to point out is that, as I mentioned, in 2017 when we started this, we did collect baseline data. But you don't see that represented there because the method for us collecting that information, uh, to me, honestly, it was apples to oranges. It was a paper to pen collection. And so what I really wanted to do is apples to apples. Although we can blend in that 2017 data, I really, it was important to me that we look um, comparatively. And so the other reason that you don't see 2020 is because obviously 2020 didn't go so great, although we did collect uh, information across grades 6 through 12 in 2020. It was collected in April of 2020. Again, the response rate with the kids at home um, online, it was not statistically valid, so I don't even have the 2020 numbers in there. Um, that didn't negate any sort of credibility for us in terms of the federal level because we only really have to do this every other year. I think it's important though to keep our finger on the pulse and do it every year because the second you take your, your foot off the pedal of prevention, things go awry. And so we do collect this every year. So I'm happy to report 2021 saw our lowest um, average, <coughs> average levels of alcohol use down across uh, all grades. Um, the one thing I will mention is that, uh, oh, excuse me, up in eighth grade, though I want to point that out. Um, again, we're hoping this will stay on trend come 2022 because, again, this is with kids not out and socializing the way that they right. normally would. Um, parties, yeah. right. events, celebrations right. did not quite happen the same way. Um, to be clear, too, this only asks about past 30 day use. I do also ask about past year use. I didn't bring that tonight, but that is something we look at. So past 30 days from the date of, of asking the question. <clears throat> to that point though, Amy, if I could. Yeah. <laughs> um, even though they weren't going to parties, 
I'm pretty sure all the adults had more alcohol in their house that they could have gotten. <laughs> we, got, we got quite a bit of reports to the coalition on that, um, <laughs> including social media posts sent to us anonymously. I should be clear, the coalition has no enforcement and alcohol. Uh, adults can do what adults do. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's definitely a casual attitude among alcohol use in this town. This is something we've tracked across multiple years, at least from the perception of the youth. So the youth report to us that they see adults seeing alcohol use as not a big deal. And that's and we've seen that across all years collectively. So <laughs> marijuana. Um, as we know with uh, legalization, we, we expected um, increase in use. Again, this was down in correlation with 2000, uh, compared, excuse me, against 2019. I did expect, well, I expected this to be a little bit closer, to be honest with you, because of legalization. But again, access was incredibly difficult. Uh, we know that the number one source of marijuana for youth is via the internet and social media. And so that, engage, that engagement of actually having to go and picking up your product still didn't happen as much. Prescription drug use, this is something that is the most deadly, as we know, <coughs> down again. And I'm, I'm just very happy to report that. Um, the way that we phrase this, I guess, this question all the time, the way that we phrase this is prescription drugs not prescribed to you by a doctor or a therapist. So, for example, if you are taking your best friend's Adderall or Xanax or Oxy, that would be what we're looking at here. Vape use. This is something that you know uh, in, this, in this body here, certainly, that we've been targeting this significantly. And it is awesome to see the results of that go down. Again, with the great assault being a crazy year, um, but that's something that we really purposely locked, our, locked in on, our focus. And I'm very happy to report that with the administration support, starting next fall, the school resource officer and I are going to be getting into fifth grade to talk about vape use, which is the first time we've ever been able to do that and had that access. Um, over COVID, Detective Lucci and I became trained in a program called Catch Your Breath. It is science-based curriculum to prevent vape use, and we are going to be delivering that to all fifth graders across the district. I'm very excited about that, starting in October, I believe. So this is the one that was really interesting. Um, tobacco use went up a little bit, and when I say tobacco use, this is categorized as conventional combustible cigarettes, um, chew, spitless chew, um, anything that you put in your mouth that is not vape basically, and we were expecting this. So we partnered quite closely with the New England Tobacco um, Specialists in the region, and we were expecting this number to go up. To be honest with you, probably even a little bit more, we thought, because what's been happening is trends across the country, not just North Reading, not just the state, but across the country, we're seeing um, <coughs> youth become addicted to nicotine through vape, and then once their vape access got restricted, especially in this town, by the way, it has very strict right. regulations, um, that they switch to whatever they get their hands on, including combustible cigarettes. Oftentimes creating what's called a dual use user, where somebody might vape inside, go outside, and light up. So uh, we are not surprised to see that go up, and we will be engaging our regional partners to, to combat that. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so on your last point, are the are the very strict measures counterproductive? That's a great question, and that's something that we have to think about, and I, my gut answer is no, because we know that increased access increases use. So my thought is I actually think, where would that number be if we didn't have those? Would it be mm -hmm. even significantly higher? So my gut reaction is no, but I think this is something we can't look at in just North Reading. This is something we need regional, statewide, and even national data on to really make a decision about that. But again, what I know is reduction in access leads to reduction in use. Mm -hmm. So maybe that gap would have been a bit worse. Okay. Is it easier in your, and again, uh, I know alcohol, how that can be to like procure, it can be harder. I mean, here we've, uh, we've definitely took a, took a stand, especially last year. But when it comes to tobacco and vape, are you seeing a difference of procurement, meaning is one easier to get than the other, all else being equal? Let's say they're both available. Or is it, like, are you seeing it that they're more strict because there's such a, a spotlight on vape versus a regular pack of Marlboros? 
I think my opinion, based on limited data here, is that alcohol is easier to get because they're getting it through older siblings and adults providing it. I, I okay. have seen some data that reflects that adults are more likely to provide alcohol to a youth than tobacco products. And when I say tobacco product, I should say nicotine product. Okay. We almost don't ever see adults giving over combustible cigarettes, by the way. It's almost always vape products. Or saying, um, I mean, we had, we had a family we would be working with that dad would go up to New Hampshire and buy for the kids' friends. And they would all just Venmo him. You know, operating on Snapchat and say, what do you want? What flavors do you want? And going right up to you know, New Hampshire to, to procure that. But we never see you know, combustible cigarettes getting handed over. But alcohol, and we'll talk about that in a second. There's a, there's a slide about that. So just a real uh, quick overall picture. You can see the downward trends again, just addressing that tobacco gap. Um, I do suspect that that gap would have been worse had we not had uh, more stricter regulations on there. And by the way, most of those regulations were related to vaping, not, not combustible cigarettes, although the flavor thing is what really took a hold across all those nicotine products because you were no longer able to buy um, flavored rolling papers and, and those uh, menthol products, which were very popular. So I do want to pause here. I have a couple more slides, but I want to pause here to thank the community because I think this is a project that virtually every town department and organization has worked on in some way in the past five years, including the select board, previous select boards. I think maybe just not the water department. Maybe. <laughs> but you were supportive of it, but thank you. Yeah. I think virtually every town department, the library, youth services, public schools, law enforcement, uh, firefighters, everybody has supported and backed up in some way. Elder affairs, everybody. And I, I really want everybody to see this as a real team win, that when you address upstream prevention, really great things in small communities can happen. And it takes everybody pulling in the same direction for it to happen. If this had been just a police matter, or just the police doing this, it never would have worked without our engagement in other, in other sectors. And I'm so thankful that we have about 37 volunteers in the coalition and it's growing. Because if I wasn't here, we need to make sure that this work continues on without a full-time Amy. And so I just want to pause here and really thank the community and the administrative uh, support that we've gotten. It's been great because we literally couldn't have gotten this ball rolling. Um, so I mentioned some of those other pieces of data that we collect. One is the perception of risk or harm. This is the percentage of students that said they saw that substance as being a moderate or great risk. We saw a decline in grades 9 and 10 related to alcohol, tobacco again, and marijuana. Although not great jumps, not giant jumps, but they were a decline slightly. Um, what we want is these numbers to be high. We want the perception of risk or harm to be high because another prohibitive factor is when kids think something could hurt them long term, they are less likely to try it. Although I want to remind everybody, because we forget as adults, their mindset is, it won't happen to me. I can't get addicted. I, I would never have these negative health effects. And for me, I lost my dad in January um, to lung cancer. He started when he was a teenager and nobody intervened. And he didn't quit smoking until six years ago. So this is more important to me than ever um, to have some adult come in and say, listen, can we, can we curb this here? Um, my dad thought he'd retire and live the rest of his life driving my mom nuts and vice versa. And he was diagnosed with lung cancer and passed just 10 days later. Wow. It was so fast, and when he was in the hospital, he said to his doctor, I wish I had known back then. And when he was talking back then, he was talking about when he was 18 and 17. Right. He wasn't talking six years ago. He was talking about when he was a kid, yep. and that was heartbreaking. So this work, to me, is more important than ever. Um, and again, those kids back then, you don't think that. You don't think that way. This could happen to me. Um, again, just addressing perception of risk or harm related to other products. So the vaping non-nicotine, vaping nicotine, and the use of CBD products. Um, I do want to mention that um, CBD products is, is what is being labeled as CBD products by their perception. So that could have more or less than 0.3% THC. The kids don't know. They're just considering it CBD products, including CBD-infused um, drinks and beverages and edible products like that. Um, this gets to your point, Mr. Studo, um, about, about access. And so this is comparative 2019 to this year, and you'll see the number one place mentioned is at a friend's home. This has been consistent across all the years. If I were to go back to 2017 and show you that, 
Although I will add, this is the first year that we are starting to see students admit to using products on school grounds. So that was the first time we saw that show up in the survey as a number one location. But again, a friend's house, and we know unsupervised, nine times out of 10 being provided by an adult sibling, or excuse me, an older sibling or an adult is how they get it. Very, I think people think kids break into liquor cabinets a lot, and that just really isn't as often as adults providing the alcohol to kids. <coughs> With the mindset of is, I take their keys, they're safe, as if that's the only risk there is. And that happens quite a bit. So we do look at North Reading versus uh, national data. And the study that we use is from the University of Michigan called Monitoring the Future. Um, this is against it's our 2021 numbers against their 2020 numbers because their 2021 wasn't available at the time. Um, they only collect numbers going back to eighth grade. So even numbers eighth, 10th, and 12th grades, although we do six through 12. So this is what you see here. And they don't collect prescription drug use on grades eight and 10. They only do it on 12th grade. So what you see in red is anywhere that North Reading is not is doing poorer than um, national, and again you see tobacco here. Hmm. Anything green is where North Reading does better um, or has less use. I should put it that way, versus the national average. And anything orange is kind of like it's it's real too close to kind of track that. And we do that for vaping um, and marijuana as well. So just to wrap up, <coughs> excuse me. I do want to, I, I try to end every presentation with this. If you know somebody, if you know yourself, you would like some help with any substance or mental health issues, North Reading, as you all know, has a full-time mental health clinician. She's mental health and substance abuse. She works in both. Her name is Laura Miranda. She works right next to me every day. She's out of the police department, but she'll meet with you however you want. And please reach out to her because nobody has to suffer. And if you are somebody who loves somebody with an addiction, you can get help too. Um, you don't have to bear the, the load, uh, the brunt of it all on your own. So I always try to end with that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone have questions or comments? Mrs. Gonzalez? First of all, I hope we always have a full-time Amy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Please. Um, um, I think it was concerning to see those eighth grade numbers. Yeah. And I'm just curious why. Why the eighth grade such... A difference. Well, the very thing that was interesting the most to us is that eighth grade is they have health class. And every year, Dr. Blucci and I go in and teach eighth grade classes about these subjects, and we didn't this year. Hmm. Now, I'm not saying that's the yeah. only reason, that's just the only thing I know of that was different between 2020. And that's not to say that, that Mrs. DeMori didn't address these issues. It's just that Detective Blucci and I didn't explicitly address some of these issues <coughs> like we normally would. That was different. I think the presence of social media, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. That's the only thing that I can identify as what was really different. Because seventh grade, or eighth grade does have help. Hmm. And then just, you know, you, your comment about your dad, and um, <coughs> I, I also lost my dad. C he had COPD, and same thing, smoking very young all through his life. Um, <coughs> Have you ever thought about, I'm, I'm sure you've thought about, like, I remember way back the Marlboro Man. Do you remember the Marlboro Man and all the billboards? And then he got cancer, and he actually went around speaking and trying to tell kids um, what the effects were for him. Something like that, that they actually see it like that kind of scared straight thing. There is some data on there that that doesn't work. Really? Um, that's kind of the DARE program, basically, <coughs> the, the just say no, the abstinence, let's show you the outcomes. But again, when, because we're adults, we don't remember what it is like to think that way. What they'll see is either um, that won't happen to me or he survived it, so will I. That's been some of the outcome of that data. Although my gut reaction is, of course, let's bring people in on that topic. Um, it's been kind of proven to be ineffective or less, as eff less effective than we thought. What does work is having peers come and talk to peers. So somebody that <coughs> says um, they're within about a five age, very specific, a five year age range, to come and say, I, I got hooked on vaping by watching this, um, you know, these Snapchat videos, I got addicted, and let me tell you how it affected my life. That is far more effective than having um, somebody come in and says, listen, I'm, 
so recovering from cancer, I go through all these therapies. So we will be targeting a lot of money this year. Right? <coughs> Great. Yes. Federal money. Thank you. Um, yeah, I am. Thank you. Well, nice to finally meet you in person. It you know, took a while, <laughs> um, which is nice. So, no, it, uh, it, it shines a spotlight on what we can control and the easiest and, you know, it seems like the, the perception of risk of alcohol going down as the ages go older, I, I, I could see where that's definitely because, um, not that you're serving underage minors, but you could have a party where the kids come over, the parents come over, and of course the parents are going to offer whatever. So the kids may see this and it's like, oh, well, when I'm an adult, the risk of this, because I feel like alcohol is one of those things where adults have just as much of a hard time as kids and it may start at a younger age. So I, you know, I do see where that's something where, to me, I think, I mean, I don't know if you agree, but it, it may be the hardest thing. Because I feel like, to your point, I'm not gonna give you a cigarette because like, it just, it's, you can see the smoke. Prescription drugs are obvious what narcotics mm -hmm. could do. And the vaping we know, but you know, well, if I have a glass of wine here, like dad had and friend, like, you know, so, so I feel like it's, uh, it's odorless. Oh, okay, let me rephrase, it's not odorless, but you know my point. It's a, it is a chronic <coughs> issue. It is something that is generational. We've seen this year after year, and I think, you know, especially if we get funded again, we're going to have to really engage parents and mm -hmm. adults in this because, um, and it's very interesting. So I, I just want to put this out there. We have parents that will come to us and say, I know of underage parties going on, but I don't want to tell you about it because I don't want to have the social stigma of it, of ratting this out. The adults are saying this. So if the adults are saying this, yeah. imagine what the kids, what kind of pressure they're getting put under about participating about telling, um, you know, reporting that it's going on. So the casual attitude in this town, and I'm only speaking about this town, um, is really something that is having an effect on our young people. How do you combat it? We're gonna have to have a very large scale campaign that involves everybody. Mm -hmm. And that is quite an undertaking. And I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm mean, looking forward to it. And you know everybody sitting here is going to have to be a part of that as well if I can request Absolutely. that early. Yeah. Um, and having a really honest discussion, I am going to offer in the next uh, semester, so in the fall, and I'm looking forward to seeing how parents uh, participate. There's a pro program called Safe Homes, and this is something that the school has put out before. And people can sign up, but there's never really been a, 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 something to draw them together on this. And basically, if you are all <coughs> parents of kids that are the same social group. I will lead a facilitated discussion where you all come together and make a pact with each other that if those kids go to your home, Mr. Waller, you can guarantee that you will not be providing or endorsing alcohol. And so it's like a parent pact, mm. but secondary to that, this is a really fascinating issue, you all agree to a common consequence. Because what's happening is the parents say, I don't want to um, punish uh, you know, Rich because, uh, you know, Sean had the same thing happen, but his parents just gave him a slap on the wrist. So I don't want to be the bad parent and give you, you know, a week of punishment. And this is happening all the time where parents are comparing each other to say what was the, what was the consequence. So in this discussion, I lead a discussion where we all kind of agree on what is an appropriate consequence and that you all agree to that consequence if any of your kids get caught. So it's almost like a parent support group. <coughs> and, and I will, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll end with this because I, I know we have to move on, but that outreach you're talking about does work when it starts with the parents because uh, I was born in Italy. There, alcohol abuse is just not an issue because it's just not, it's not romanticized. It's just not a big deal. Like, you know, if you want to try a little bit of wine, but your parents will be the first ones to be like, this is not a big deal. So I feel like, I'm not saying that will work here, but I see your point. It starts with the parents, like from an early age being like, yeah, it's there, who cares? Where here, it's like this, this thing of like, oh my God, this forbidden fruit that I can't get my hands on. Just like a lot of things, so. And that's know, one aspect, I think. One aspect, part. I feel like, uh, to your point, generationally, I can, you can even make the argument culturally, just here Certainly. in this country, Certainly. just because of how it is, so. Certainly. But yeah, no, that's great to hear those. I, yeah, there's no other way to get those numbers, so thank you. Yeah, that's the plans. Any other comments, questions?
Just, it's just concerning that our tobacco use is beating the national average. Because I was wondering where the benchmark was, and yeah. when I see that, that's very concerning. Yep. And I don't know. How can you make tobacco use look ugly? That's all I can think of. Uglier. More ugly. Yeah. Yeah. More, yeah, more, more, more than it already yeah, is. Else can like, you, do? you know, I mean, it's it's an ugly habit, and uh, but I think um, that's concerning we... that that's. I don't know why we would be indulging in that compared to the national average. Doesn't make any sense to me. I I don't know, but if you think of it again. Addiction is addiction, yeah. and you will go to great lengths to satisfy that addiction when there is a true addiction. Yeah. And so, when I'm, what we know is when the kids get hooked on the nicotine from a vape, which is yeah. glamour, you know, glamour yeah. and glitz and social. I have to get that. I know the consequences, but I have to take care of that addiction. That's the only thing I can say <coughs> to justify that. It yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Right? I, I saw I saw that with an adult, my yeah. adult friend, yeah, who couldn't get her vapes, and she went back to the cigarettes. When we went on vacation, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. You got to get it. Any other question, comment? Uh, no, just again, your enthusiasm, uh, but more importantly, the positive impact that you've had in the time that you've been here is mm. substantial. Thank you. And again, you not, not that you started from scratch, but we've we've made significant progress, and I think public awareness is certainly up uh, due to your efforts in Boris and uh, the commitment that the board has made last several years to ensure that we have these resources. And uh, well, let's hope the federal government comes through with the, yeah. with the grant money here yeah. and, uh, and continue this on for another five years because it can only help uh, for sure. And uh, again, I think every year I hear, time to come before us, you know, the different tax that you're taking um, is of interest, certainly, but it's uh, the impacts, you know, so you see little incremental changes for the positive. Again, the tobacco that's a head scratcher. But yeah. Yeah, other than the vape, I mean, the flavored vapes and stuff like that really caught on and that hooked a lot of kids, so yeah. <coughs> a lot of other people too. So, anyway, again, I applaud your effort. I enjoy your enthusiasm and what you bring to the table here, what you bring to the board, to the community as a whole. So, uh, again, I hope the, the program is continued. And uh, if it isn't, we need to take a look at what do we need to do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. From the chair, too, I, I really think that the data is always an eye opener for us, and I appreciate that you're giving us these very more updates on the data. I'd like to see if you can do it this way. This, and I know there's a margin of error with tracking it this way, but by class, like class of 2021, class of 2022, because you can track almost. I'm shocked at the sixth grade numbers, too. That I know you were shocked at eighth grade, but I'm shocked at the sixth grade numbers. You wouldn't think it would be that high. But even though it's low in comparison, but you can almost track, you know, the different grades and the margin of error, error being some students coming in and out of that, that particular class. But it would be interesting to see it tracked by class as well. And um, I, I mean, I'm just, I just, you already know all this because we're kind of preaching to the preacher, but it's very, very hard to see not just an adult that's addicted to any substance, but a kid, and it's almost an impossibility once they're hooked on it to convince them otherwise. That's a real struggle for parents, and even the parents that are already doing the packs with one another. Let me know. Make sure you tell me if you see this. Let me talking about it and trying to, you know, eradicate that from the friend groups. This is a real. It's here. It's accessible. The parents are the ones that can tell you who's selling it and whose parent is providing it to the kid that's selling it or so on and so forth. Parents know this information. And I wholeheartedly agree with you on two points. Parents have to be playing a much more active role in this. But as someone pointed out, parents, there's a lot of parents that are addicted to all of those same substances, so they're not even present to be able to do that. And even the ones that aren't, it's a, it's, it's a tough road to hold. It's very tough. And the second thing is, these kids have access to information and data. They're not looking things up in an encyclopedia like we did. They're not going Dewey Decimal looking up a book on the topic. I'll explain that to you. They have access to everything. Mm -hmm. And from my opinion, they're so much smarter than us. So you are getting in there in fifth grade with a science-based curriculum is that's going to be amazing. I mean, in every grade that you're doing that, 
they, they, they understand data, they understand numbers, they understand science, that I think is going to have a tremendous impact. They're accepting of that type of an education. I think it's different than that dare suitcase, you know, with all the different like little dr drugs. And as formidable as it was to have a police officer come in to class, they're kind of the same in the same set as a parent saying, "Don't do drugs," and you know, then you know, it's a matter of you know who your social group is so, as a as a kid. So, but I think that that the work you're doing, like Mr. O'Leary said, and everybody is commenting is so important for our town, our community, and I'm so appreciative of every. Everything you do, everything Laura does, everything the committee does for you, I, I would say make use of that committee for all of this stuff. Because you know, sometimes I get from the members, and I think they want to take an active role in what you're doing too. So make use of those members and uh, a more active role. I mean, they're happy with what's going on. But but thank you so much for all the data and information, thank all you. the work that you do for us. Thank you, everybody. Glad to be here and reporting good news. Yes. That's good. That's great. Great. Thanks. We're Thank glad you. to hear it. All right. I think <coughs> we might probably, perhaps because we, we have people in the wings listening and waiting, maybe jump over a couple of the agenda items to get to them, to the um, water rate hearing. Mr. Gilberto. Oh, we got a hand raised. Please, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. <clears throat> we had uh, advertised for a 745 water rate hearing. I do think it's important to hear from the water superintendent who's joined by the public works director relative to our um, overall water use because I think that the two are related and we had that on as an agenda item just prior to the hearing. I should let you know I've been in communication with the chair of the school committee. Uh, we were shooting or aiming to have a, a joint meeting at 8.30. We are delayed, they are also delayed and so right now we are, are working on a timeline of having that joint meeting with the school committee participating, we, we believe virtually at approximately 9.15. So if we kind of just want to keep going through the agenda, that's probably our best bet. I thought we'd be done by then. I do too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they like to talk. They, they, they are. They are. Will, they, yeah. they, they, they are. School committee. <laughs> they are, well, to their, they just to the, go on and on. And on, and on. <laughs> to the school committee's credit, they were willing to to recess and and come here yeah, now. They might have to do that. So but we we have a we have an advertised hearing. So. All right. We're sort All of in right, a tough spot. So let's, um, and Madam Chair, through you, I, I, he doesn't know it, but I need to set the water superintendent's computer to broadcast through Zoom so those at home can see the PowerPoint. Sure. Uh, <coughs> it might be a job being an IT someday. I don't feel I'm doing such a great job, to be honest with you, but thank you. But I'm not yet another thing I'm on. Um, I should thank Brian Carter, who has. I think on four occasions in the past five days to build us out. We will thank him. I already yeah. thank him tonight when he got my thing up and running. With his two children. Although I think it might have been his two children that got running. Two but yeah, it might have been. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, you know. <laughs> that's why he brought them. <laughs> Madam Chair, there, there is a hearing notice. If uh, yes. the clerk would be so Let's willing just to read, read it. <coughs> it's in my packet, right? Yes. Sorry. And I would tell you the page number, save for that. Right, I, I don't is. have access <coughs> to, to do so. Uh, Town and Road Threading meeting notice, water rates and capital plan hearing. In accordance with the requirements of Section 191. 16 and 191 17 of the Code of North Reading. The Select Board and the North Reading Water Commission will hold the annual water rate and water system capital plan hearings on Monday, June 21st at 7 45 p.m. Please refer to the calendar on the town website when the Select Board agenda for the meeting is posted on Thursday, June 17, 2021. To find the venue for the hearing, the calendar may be found at the following address northreadingma.gov slash node slash 166 slash events okay. 
Okay. All right. Yep, all set. Thank you and good evening. Uh, Mark Clark, the water superintendent. I'm joined tonight in present by Joseph Parisi, our public works director. Also via Zoom, uh, Vinny Raguchi, who's the chair of the Water Commission, is with us tonight. So, this is our annual water rate and capital plan hearing. Uh, there is an agenda item basically to talk a little bit about water use guidelines. I do want to just point out that we currently are under our what we call stage zero or normal summer water use restrictions, which basically allows watering on an odd even basis. Um, and we would ask that people uh, comply with those restrictions. It is a voluntary restriction. If everyone would comply with the odd even, we would be much less likely to have to implement more strict uh, water use restrictions further into the summer. Um, I did want to just give you very quickly, and I know this is going to be hard to see, I'm asking if you can see just the black and the red in those two columns that are there. So this compares May of last year with May of this year and June of last year with June of this year. Uh, and what you can see, if you look in the May column, that kind of the fourth column over, it's almost all black for the entire month. That means that the use this year was higher than the use last year for the same period. Until you get down towards the end, and I think we all remember the Memorial Day weekend, uh, where it's 50 degrees and rain basically all weekend, and then the numbers jump from black to red because the use this year was much less than the use last year. And that trend has actually continued. If you look over into the June column, the uh, June column is almost all red. So the use in 2021 in June is significantly lower than it was in 2020. Um, based on this, uh, we have sent out a couple of reminders to uh, groups of people that have been watering multiple days a week six, seven days a week, asking them to comply with the audit even. Um, we're at a state where we're doing well, I would say, this year. Compared to last year, right around this time last year, we bumped to the two-day-a-week watering just because the, uh, the use had gone up. If, you're, if you can see in that 2020 June column, there are a few days where we hit the 2.6, or even that, that one that's highlighted green is 2.7 million gallons a day. Our contract with Andover only allows for up to 2.6 million gallons a day. So when we start exceeding that, we can't bring in that much water into our system. What tends to happen is our storage tanks start to draw. And that's kind of the most stressful thing that happens to me, uh, other than a major water main break. So we pushed real hard last year to, to get the, uh, the non-voluntary, the mandatory restrictions implemented and then send out, I believe, somewhere in the no neighborhood of 400 notices shortly after that. At this point, we're not recommending any higher level of water use restrictions, but we certainly do reserve the, uh, the right if we get into an extended period of hot, dry weather. Uh, the one thing I'd point out in these columns, like if you look in the, the May column as you get towards the bottom, we're up at 2.2 or 2.3 million gallons a day, and then we hit that rainy weather, and it drops by 0.7 million gallons a day. That's a huge drop. And what you'll see is if you go over to the June column, over about a week of no rain, the use tends to, to bump back up. But we've had rain every week or every 10 days. Um, so we've been considerably different than last year. And really, this was the time last year where the drought really kicked in. So we're in fairly good condition right now. Uh, but again, we'll keep, keep you advised. So this is the water rate hearing. Um, here's just a summary of the water rates. As most of you will recall, the last time we addressed the water rates, we were actually here in uh, December and uh, recommended a 2.5% rate increase just based on what we were seeing for sales versus the cost of water. Um, it obviously cost us a little more to buy water from Andover, and uh, based on that, we had that 2.5% rate increase that went on to the February bills. We do have a fairly substantial retained earnings fund within the water department. Some of you recall the Stickney Fund. Uh, we still have about $135,000 in that fund. And then we also have what we call the Water Department Infrastructure Stabilization Fund. And you can see the money transferred in or transferred out based on town meeting votes. Uh, when we were looking to go to MWRA, we raised the rates fairly significantly in advance of that. And you can see that that gave us some years where we were putting a million dollars a year into our stabilization fund. And then the last couple of years prior to just this February, we kept the rates the same. And you can see how that uh, transfers in kind of drop off. So the costs continue to go up. Andover basically raises their rates more than 2.5%, and based on the deal we negotiated with them, that causes our rates to go up by 2.5% for these first number of years of the contract. So as the cost goes up, 
we didn't raise the rates, more cost, less revenue means that that, uh, that number went down. And you can see that the most recent transfer is only $14,000 in this June. Um, we're also buying, and I'll go into this a little bit more later, the, uh, a truck out of the uh, infrastructure stabilization fund, which is that red $105,000 you see. So we really have about $2.77 million in our infrastructure stabilization fund. There is no real industry standard. It is really town to town uh, specific, but that's, that is, I feel, and I believe that the public works director feels also a fairly healthy number to have at this point. Madam Chair, through you. Just two, two things. First, the time is now 8.30. For anyone who is tuning in to view a joint meeting with the school committee, uh, we're going to be delayed in starting that meeting, and we just ask the public to bear with us. We are in the midst of the water rate hearing. The second point is uh, to the water superintendent. I think the screen share is not conveying your presentation. It's only at the first slide of it for some reason, so I'm just going to take a quick look at that if I could. Thank you, Madam Chair. I take it you don't want me to start again? No. <laughs> <laughs> so where do we stand right now? Where are we in the current fiscal year? It's always good to look at that. So we kind of keep a track month to month. What do we bill? Uh, what's uncollected? And where do we stand? Interesting, if you look at the FY20, which was the prior fiscal year, go down to the June, and then the second column over is the year-to-date amount. We billed for just over or just under $4.1 million last year. If you jump over to the right side, where are we this year? We're projecting we're going to bill for just under $4.8 million this year. Almost a $700,000 <coughs> increase from year to year. That's huge. And that's really based on we had historically high water use last summer. Um, part of it we related to the drought. And again, we've called the other part the, the COVID factor, that people are home, people were using more water. But what does that mean for us? So, Obviously, when we buy more water from Andover, our costs go up. So we're projecting about $4.78 million to be our billing for the year. Our original budget approved last year at town meeting was $4.4 million. Uh, at this year at town meeting, because of the increased cost from Andover, we asked for an increase in the water department operating budget of $147,000. Typically, what we project is we had 9% uncollected last year, $366,000. That gets leaned against people's real estate taxes. That's the first money that comes off whatever they pay on their real estate taxes. So that 366 really comes in in FY21 and becomes an FY21 uh, revenue. But if we project the same 9% uncollected this year, because we built so much more, it's a much higher number this year. So we built for 4.7, subtract out those next two numbers in yellow, add in the 366, subtract out the 430. And the bottom line is it looks like, you know, my retained earning calculation is we'll have about $106,000 going to retained earnings. It's not entirely based on we went up 2.5%. It's really based on those huge numbers of revenue that we said, saw from such huge usage last year. So uh, we're in relatively good shape going to the end of FY21. I know I kind of gave you back, guys back in December a broad range on where we would be at this point of the year. So this is kind of a little more narrowed down than that. And I'm fairly confident in that number. Just in terms of the budget, the budget has not increased a whole lot. The budget for FY22, if you look at the very <coughs> low, it's kind of the middle column all the way down at the bottom, was about $4.468 million. The next column over is FY22. It's only increased by about $16,000. And with that, I, I, I know I make that a small number, but in terms of a four plus million dollar budget, that's a 0.4% increase in the, the budget from year to year. So what happened? You can see there's some huge changes there. Personnel decreased significantly. We had a couple of positions that we've uh, been holding. We hadn't filled in recent years. And now that we've gone to Andover, we don't intend to fill those positions. We took the money from those and moved it into our expense side because no one were buying more water from Andover. Costs like electricity, chemicals, some of the maintenance that's on the wells, those costs have gone down. But the cost to purchase water has gone way up. So personnel has gone down. Overall, the expenses have gone up. Um, 
we actually are seeing it drop in our debt service by about 87,000 this year. So all that rolled together is where that 0.4% increase in the water department budget uh, comes from. <coughs> we pay a number of indirect costs. If you read the, uh, the town meeting budget article, you'll see general insurance, 11,344 from water revenue. So we're an enterprise fund. Anything that it costs the town to support the water department, we basically reimburse the town through these indirect costs. And the finance department, once a year, will do a transfer to take money from the water department to pay uh, these indirect costs. Um, we're just under half a million dollars there in terms of <coughs> services that are provided. I'll just touch really quickly on this. So this was also approved at town meeting. This is the capital. Uh, this is also the capital hearing. So this is the capital plan that was approved at the town meeting. Uh, we've got money for additional water main replacement and rehabilitation, uh, water distribution system upgrades. This is more for the small stuff we do in support of the, mostly in support of the town road program, where we'll go into a neighborhood that has old iron services, old fire hydrants, uh, insufficient water isolation gates, and we'll install that infrastructure in there. Uh, water storage tank mixers, some of you are probably familiar, we've sent out notices rel relative to uh, trihalomethanes in the drinking water, and that's caused when you chlorinate the water. But one of the uh, things people have found is, as the water in our storage tank, what really happens is, as those storage tanks raise and fill, the water doesn't go in and circulate really good, and you don't have you know, a similar age of water in the, that tank. What happens is, the water comes in, it's cold, the cold water's denser, it sits on the bottom, the warmer water, rides on the top of that. So you get some, some young water in the tank, but you get some older water in the tank. And the older water is really what tends to drive up the tri production of trihalomethanes. Storage tank mixers is basically you put a physical mixer. It's kind of like a propeller. You put it in the bottom of the tank, and it just spins and turns that water over. So you don't tend to have pockets of you know, old water in your tank. The next item is, is uh, painting. We're going to look to paint one of the water storage tanks this year. And those four, first four projects are coming out of uh, borrowing. And then the last item, I had mentioned this, we're looking to take 105 from the stabilization fund and purchase a, a dump truck. Again, this is hard to read. It should be in your packet. But what we're recommending is, so we have a 0.4% <coughs> increase in the budget. Typically, what would happen is if we wanted to just cover that increase, we'd ask to raise the three tiers each by 0.4%. So across all three tiers. Um, we're actually recommending, or my recommendation is a, a two and a half percent increase. That's really to, to get back to generating about $100,000 into that reserve fund. As you can see, we had a small project for 105 that we took out. So rather than start depleting that, to make sure we're in a good positive financial uh, position going into next year, we're looking to, uh, to raise that $100,000. Again, the 100,000 we kind of, 106 that I showed earlier that I'm estimating our reserve fund transfer will be this year, is based on very high water use last year. If we don't see that same type of water use, we would not be able to generate any type of retained earnings. Um, so we're recommending across the board on all three tiers a 2.5% rate <coughs> increase. And then there's three small, you can see the highlighted items in there, uh, in the fees. So for a meter test, if somebody questions their water meter, uh, it costs us about $100 to pull and have that meter tested. We were only charging $80. So if your meter, if you request a meter test and your meter test comes back inaccurate, we don't charge you for that. But if you're telling us you think your meter's wrong and you ask us to pull your meter and have it tested, and it comes back within the accuracy li limits that are set for water meters, we do charge you for that because we stand behind our meters, especially these new meters. Uh, dropping down to cross-connection testing. Cross-connection is when you have a like a chemical line that needs to be prevented from flowing back into the into the water system, we have to test the devices that are in, especially at like the uh, the businesses on uh, Concord Street that may have some not so clean chemicals. Um, we had a, a, a local guy that was doing the testing for years and years here. He retired this year. I think he'd been giving us a little bit of a discount. Uh, subsequently, the the cost for us to test cross connections has gone up with the new consultant we're going to have. So we're asking for that to go up, and then fire flow tests. A couple times a year we'll get a request from our sprinkler company looking to build a new building or do uh, a renovation and asking us to come out and conduct a fire flow test for them. We usually do them at like 10 o'clock at night. We bring guys in on overtime 
we had only been charging $250 for that test and then recalculating what the guys, you know, they get a four hour minimum, what their overtime is, it's more like 350. So we're asking for that, those three fees to be raised at, at the well. And that's pretty much all I have. Thank you, Mr. Clark. That's great. Any questions from my colleagues? Mr. Sudo? Um, so, when, the more we use, the more we have to give Andover. Is that correct? So it, it's basically a per volume. Okay. So if we buy 10 gallons and we jump to 20 gallons, the cost to us goes twice as much. Okay. Yes. So, but so my question is, besides cost, um, do you foresee any capacity issues if we use? So meaning, when we issue these different warnings for the, you know, how much water to use. Is it based because we're trying to keep costs down or because we won't have a capacity? It's based on capacity. Okay. So like last year, did we hit capacity? The, there were days we hit capacity in and, June, which led us to implement the more stringent restrictions. Okay. And what happens when we hit capacity? So if, if we're taking as much water as Andover can give us, and again, there's a bump in 2025 where it goes from 2.6 million gallons to 3 million gallons a day. But if we hit capacity, and we're above capacity, that's gonna come from somewhere. And what it really does is it reduces what that volume comes out of our storage tanks. So we could lose three feet today, three feet tomorrow, and eventually our storage tanks tend to get to the point where fire protection isn't as good if you live on the top of the hill like some of the uh, people in this room, your, your pressure tends to decrease as well because of the, uh, the reduced water level in the storage tanks. Uh, so it becomes, it's really a, a public safety issue at that point. We like to sell water, but we have to have the water to sell in order to, uh, to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So under the terms of the agreement with Andover and the permissions that we have in place right now, it's, there's a certain level that will increase once we're um, permitted to draw more under that agreement. So under our water management act, which is the state permit, we are required to take up to 3 million gallons a day. In talking with Andover, they, their comments as we had our negotiations was they would take them a couple of years to have a water uh, capital plan looking to improve their distribution system as well. So they said on day one they could give us up to 2.6. It would take them those five years or so to develop to be able to give us that higher level of, uh, of water use. Um, as I did mention that the water use last summer, the peak days were much higher than we historically seen. We were typically in the 2.3 to 2.2 to 2.3 million gallons a day. We were up to 2.7 million gallons a day one day last year. So that, it, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but a, a jump of that level for any water supplier is just huge. Where you're going from, you're thinking your max day is 2.3 million gallons a day, and all of a sudden it's, you know, it's bumped up to that level. Uh, and talking to other water suppliers, it was a fairly common occurrence last year, but uh, <coughs> kind of stressful nonetheless. I mean, if we, I'm sorry, can, no, if we have that contract to have up to 2.6 till 2025, and we struck it, and I know Mr. O'Leary worked hard on that. Um, I was uh, along with but, our, Well, everybody, well, well, my, my thing is that if we have that agreement, is it really our problem? They got to come up with at least 2.6, correct? So if, we, if we're under 2.6, that's fine. We okay, so meaning when you say the supplier is stressed, though, I mean, if Andover came and said, hey, you guys are coming in at 2.3, can you do us a favor? We'd, okay. We'd say, no, we have a contract. You have to deliver okay. us 2.6. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Mr. Walker. Just one quick question. Um, the on one of the slides, you showed that the water department budget was like 4.5 <coughs> million, 4.8 projected. Um, but we had a collected of like, Three hundred sixty-six thousand four hundred thirty thousand. Is that just a constant every month? We always have that outstanding. Uh, it's not every month, collection? but it's year to year. So if you look at it, that percentage collected in that the, the right-hand column for the two years, in the months we <coughs> issue a bill, it jumps through the roof. Like we bill in August, bills not due to September. So there's a ton of uncollected at the end of August. Most of that comes in in early September. But really looking at the the bottom line, year to year, it's it's been nine, ten. Ten and a half percent, and it's generally the same. Same accounts have the uh, the uncollected at the end. So of the I mean, do we just lose that money, or no? So we go. What okay. will happen I is guess if, that's my point. if it's not collected, we send demand notices, we send out lien notices, and then we actually lien the money. So it'll come off the water department. It'll go to the re in November. Typically, it goes to the real estate, and it'll show up on your January real estate bill. 
So if you pay your January real estate bill and you have any liens owed to the town, the first money that comes off that goes to pay those liens before it pays your taxes. So we do. Historically, we'll collect the FY20 uncollected money in FY21. So it becomes an FY21 in revenue, but then at the end of FY21, if, you, if it's your first year in existence, it's a problem because you didn't collect 9% then it becomes kind of a roll through year right. to year. In a year like this, because we sold so much more, it's a high, a much higher number than last year, just because the entire billing was higher than last year. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah, okay. So we're not leaving it behind, it's just a year to catch up. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions? Just a uh, Mr. Relation, uh, relation to the water meter installation, working like a child now, but in, so as I'll, I'll take my hit right here. As the stick in the mud for the, uh, the water meter, I was the one that said we should just go with a drive-by system. What are we going to do with all that data that we get? It's the best thing I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate to, you know, people laugh at me because this is the most exciting thing in my life. But, uh, you know, getting that hourly data, it's just, it's so much easier to, to explain to people where their water went. I've had people come to the office yelling at me, show them the graph, show them the charts, and they're like, Oh, I should go yell at my husband and stop yelling at you. And it's like, yep, that's what you should do. It's, but I mean, it's just, it's an incredible system. Okay. As far as the uh, accuracy uh, of the system, so we're still, we see, I mean, we we're see, still working with. Do we some, see some significant some changes though from when we switched out the old meters to the new meters as far as the accuracy of the readings and people being billed? And so we don't see a huge jump in the winter. Well, the winter times really when you would look. I mean, and it. We don't know what's going on in an individual house. If your kid went off to college and now he's home or, or vice versa, it's hard to say. Um, the summertime is just so, year to year, so much different. It's hard to say just how much. But uh, yeah, I would say, I mean, we're, we've looked at it a couple times and we're getting definitely more revenue through it. Um, it this is, I mean, here's a, here's a year where you can see even in the winter time our, our uh, February billing went from 693,000 last year to 816,000 this year. Again, it's we got to relate some of that to COVID because that's you know $100,000 on a 600,000 or $700,000 water billing in February is a huge number. So a lot of factors go into it. I wish I could, you know I know engineers like to come out and sell you something cut and dry, but there are this there's always a, a ton of things going on. Yeah, but we had a lot of old meters and homes. Yeah. You know, so now, because yeah, we were, I, I got to say we were, and this predates me, so I'm not going to take any credit for it, but, you know, we did buy a very good quality meter, the prior meters we had, we have very good quality meters now as well. Um, I would maybe just touch on the, the projects we're doing if you want. Just, I'll give you a two minute sure. summary. So, as most of you have probably driven up and down North Street, you see all the bumps. So, the, this half of North Street is done. They just today finished tying in the last piece of pipe on the other half of North Street. We still have to tie in all the services. I know Mr. Raguchi was just mentioning tonight that his water's lukewarm because you're getting those hoses that are sitting in the sun feeding some of those houses. So we're going to begin actually this week replacing some of the, the, uh, the services from the new main to the houses. That should finish up this end of the project. They're getting ready to start with a temporary water main installation over on Mount Vernon Street. So once the contract is done here, they're going to jump over to Mount Vernon Street. And then we do have the two uh, chemical feed stations between Andover and North Reading, and those are both under construction. The projected completion date for those is sometime around December. Um, the contract actually allows till about mid-April of next year, so uh, we're hoping this contractor will stay ahead of that and we'll be done with those as well by uh, the end of this year. And then the other expansion, as far as we don't know yet about Main Street, north of North Street yet. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're working on that. We're talking with our consultant to design that. Um, there was talk about putting it out this year, but I think we'll put it out for construction this, you know, spring next year. Okay, good. Good. All right, thank you. So do we have a motion? Mr. Madam Chair, through you. Oh, Mr. Gilberto. I, I do apologize, but where this is uh, a hearing, I don't, I, I don't see anybody who's oh, asking I'm to be sorry. recognized. Yes, I'm sorry. Do we have anyone that wishes to be heard? You may oh, want to take uh, the water commission. May make, want to make a recommendation, Mr. Gucci's, I believe, on the Zoom. Oh my okay. word! That's why he's waiting. I can't see. Yeah, so sure, he is there. That's yes. why he's been <laughs> sitting here waiting. 
Vin, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay, it's, it's a little tough to listen um, on, on the Zoom, but um, I've been trying to bear with it. Um, we, we had a scheduled meeting earlier tonight, and over the past week, uh, we've been exchanging uh, notes with, with Mark um, and, and, and team on uh, the recommendations. And even though uh, we, we did not have a quorum to take an official vote, um, we did have the, the uh, commission weigh in and all feel um, that, that we all support um, the recommendation of, 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 of Mark and, uh, and, and uh, public works on uh, a 2.5% um, increase. Thank you, Mr. Gucci. Now, is there anyone that wishes to be heard? In, is there anyone that's in attendance that wishes to speak? Uh, seeing none, we'll close that portion of the public hearing, and now <coughs> we have a motion. Madam Chair, I move to approve a 2.5% increase in water use rates and to approve other fees as outlined in the document entitled North Reading Water Department Recommendation Rates and Fees Effective July 1st, 2021. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? And just, Mr. Clark, it was those three fees that you wanted us to vote to approve because they're the actual cost that's incurred by the department to provide those inspections. That's correct. Okay. Okay, so motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Union. This side thing is great. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Supposed to make it Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Raguchi, too, for oh, yes. participating. Oh, yes. Thank you, Yes. Thank you. Taking the time to analyze. All right. So we have a little, little bit of time, Mr. Gilberto, before the um, before the school committee attempt. So we let's jump backwards to rescind the um, declaration. Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. I, I, I apologize for interrupting, but when we have the public works director here, could we take the order oh. of taking for Upper Elm Street? Yeah, I, would, I did want to go to that, but I wasn't sure. So Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Might be quick to get to. So please, Thank welcome. You. Thank you Thank for being here. All right, so our next, we'll, we'll go to item number 10, which is the Upper Elm Street Road Reconstruction Project. Um, we have before us adoption orders of taking, and why don't you go ahead, Percy? Sure. So, so that project, uh, in order to do some improvements to the um, the drainage on Upper Main Street, Upper Elm Street, I should say, uh, requires some um, area of land, mostly in the the lowland sections of, of properties along the uh, project area, where we would have um, you know drainage structures, um, and, you know drain pipe and and um, you know concrete headwalls basically and they would be just on the edges for the most part of these properties and there are maybe one or two that have longer stretches of pipe uh, deeper into the property but for the most part again all in the lowland um, parts of these properties and you know all of the property owners are you know working with the town to get resolution to the drainage problems that are there so you'll see that um, you know uh, my the town engineer, John Cleckville, has um, received signed documents stating that they would provide the town with the easements necessary for zero cost to the town. So we're looking to, to act on those uh, documents and, and take the, uh, the area for easements for the drainage project. Thank you. We saw those in the packet and fully signed waivers and releases and exchange for zero damage, but it's clear that that's because it will likely have a benefit to, the improvements will likely have a benefit, a direct benefit to the, their process as well. Correct. Okay. Any questions um, of the board members? Okay, so do we have a mo motion? Yep. <coughs> Madam Chair, I move to adopt the order of taking in the form presented taking easements for drainage purposes and lands abutting Elm Street and to award no damages for such taken in accordance with the signed waivers of damages presented to the board and further to authorize the chair to sign the order of taking. Second. 
Motion by Mr. Studo, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Fastest order of taking ever, probably. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you. These people are waiting a long time. <laughs> all right. So, do you want to rescind? Thank you, Mr. Clark. All right, Mr. Gilberto, back to number six. Let's rescind. See if we can get to this rescind declaration. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks for letting me in tonight. <laughs> the declaration of the local state of emergency. Mr. Gilberto. Yeah, Madam Chair, back in March of 2020, this board approved a local declaration of emergency, which was an important step relative to um, municipal authority to act um, in order to combat the pandemic, particularly in the early days. Um, with the lifting of the statewide state of emergency last Tuesday, June 15th, we're here recommending that the select board similarly vote to rescind that local emergency and is a motion that has been prepared along with a document that we will ask the chair to sign. If uh, we don't have a paper copy here, we will get it to you. Pretty self-explanatory. Hopefully no one's opposed to this, but you know, any further discussion? Is there any further discussion on it? So, seeing none, do we have a motion? Is this too yes. This is exciting. I've been waiting for this a long time for, mm -hmm. this, for this motion, right? Madam Chair, I move to rescind the local de declaration of emergency dated March 19, 2020, and to sign the printed rescission. I'll second that. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Just other than, again, for all the department heads, the administration, um, Board of Health in particular, I mean, they were meeting again tonight to, uh, to vote to uh, rescind their previous orders too. So uh, a lot of people put a significant amount of uh, time, energy, effort, above and beyond the call of duty, obviously, uh, over the last uh, how many months now? 16, 18 months, whatever it's been. And it's, uh, <coughs> and it's a testament to the people that we have working for us, uh, their character, their concern, uh, the outreach in the community uh, through all of our departments, from the youth services, elder services, everybody else. Uh, everybody's to be applauded for the efforts. And uh, you now for each and every one of us to continue to do our part, you know, get vaccinated, and keep everybody healthy, and beat this thing back. We're almost there. So. This is a huge step. Long way. Longer than we anticipated, I think so. Definitely Great. want to mention our um, police officers and our firefighters too, because they're the ones that were you know, in the thick of it when everybody mm -hmm. else was. 24 7. Yep. Which that's their training and they're, they're accustomed to it, but this is a time like no other. So, in addition to all of the other people. And also thanking you for your service as the liaison <laughs> board of health, which probably this was. I think I've had more meetings with the board of health in the last several months than I have in 30 years. You know, so, but again, so, it's a yeah, pleasure working with them, and yeah. hopefully, again, uh, I told them every meeting that how much we appreciated what they were doing, and, um, and uh, they appreciated our support and helping facilitate and whatever action they had to take. And, the support that the board showed, they appreciated too. So the direction everybody had to pivot in and uh, um, deal with this was tremendous. School department, the superintendent, the direction that everybody had to pivot for us for the different types of meetings. Uh, we, we can't really thank people enough for for their service and their dedication. But so we have a motion. So let's move we on already on. said the motion. No, we just have the vote. This was discussion. Motion, discussion, motion, and second. And any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Which actually is a good segue to liaison on assignments. Yeah. See, and I, I just wanted to. I asked Mr. Gilberto to put this on the agenda because. I did not plan to modify the liaison assignments. I was wanting to keep them as they were, so I just wanted to alert the members. I'll do an update for the for the um, the website. I think we annually update it, but I was um, hoping everyone would just 
stay put and continue to service in the roles that they're going to be assigned to. And I'll circulate a revised for, for this coming year, like we typically do. Uh, in the D, is, the, is the order taking in there for the assignment? No. No? Right. The order taken was in there. I want to sign It needs to be notarized. Oh, oh yeah. I see. Okay. okay. All right. So, next no, it's order. Right. We got right. we still have time. Able, we might be able to get through a lot of this. And our next yeah. order of business are legal bills. Yes. Um, okay. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for January 2020 in the amount of 17499 as follows. Kobelman and Page, 6052.39. Copeman and Page, PC 5752, is there a typo in one of them? I just want to, is, is there an L or not? I just want to. Oh, just Copeman. Are they separate? Yeah, the, 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 no, the L is missing. The, the L is missing. Bills. Oh, it's separate, separate bills. Yeah. Okay. 20 Elm Street 40B Project, 294450, arbitrator Richard Mullen J 2750 for a total of 17,499.39. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? <coughs> Madam Chair, Mr. the bearer of bad news. We are on track to exceed the appropriation for the legal services budget for the fiscal year. We had a pretty steep bill um, that's in there. I think the May bill is the one that's the larger of the two associated with town meeting. Um, and just to remind folks, we had a number of factors that, that went into this, um, including a number of matters that are labor related involving ongoing um, negotiations as well as a number of matters pending before third parties that required an effort on our part um, you know I'll just also note too that we did have an additional town meeting it seems like forever ago but it was in August of this year and there was a lot of work that went into that in the month of July um, for the August special town meeting so it's not shocking to be in this spot and uh, we are going to be going to the, the finance committee with a request for a reserve fund transfer um, we are projecting that the deficit is about $16,000. We're going to ask for $18,000 in order to make sure that we're clear to proceed. But um, we're hoping to receive a favorable response at their meeting, which I believe is Wednesday evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any questions? Mr. O'Leary. Just in relation to that, I mean, some of these costs are definitely associated with the pandemic. Have those been factored into the reimbursement levels that we've been seeking? So we believe that most have we really had a high amount of cost in the first three months of the pandemic that's where a lot of the effort went into and it really it didn't go away totally but it really thinned out you know through the course of this fiscal year the finance director and i will go through things and i know she's in conversations with our auditor as well with regard to those costs just to make sure we've captured everything that we can um, but um, you know looking at it we had a really intensive effort that was related to that was really on the front end there's some work that was done in January as we got ready for the clinics. I think you may have been involved in some of those conversations, Mr. O'Leary. <coughs> but I, I don't think it's going to be a huge number. But we'll make sure they're all captured. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Seeing a motion by Mr. Studo, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Two. Madam Chair, I move to approve invoice number. 11413 in the amount of 87,649.95 to Furman Gregory Datula for legal services for the secondary school building project litigation. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Is that it for legal bills, Mr. Studo? Yes. Our next order of business is to set our future board meeting schedule. And I also want the board to, um, I, I'd like to lock us into, um, you know, for the third time to charm a strategic planning meeting so that so we can Virtually focus on that as well as a, a summertime schedule. Um, that would be great. Madam Chair, I think we already had a, yeah. Well, we had July, but that's it, yeah. Oh, I I believe we have July 12th, yes, yeah. through you, okay. Madam Chair. We, uh, we looked at the calendar, we being um, Karen and I, and identified the weeks of, we, we identified July 12th, and then based on the way the calendar was falling, we're suggesting August 2nd and 23rd. Um, 
August 2nd is good, August 23rd on, on vacation. So. Madam Chair, through you, uh, a fallback um, could be to push to make sure I get this right. August to push back to August, push up to August 16th. That will be the date that Warren articles are due for the October town meeting. Coincidentally, they're due at four o'clock p.m. In, in the uh, in the town hall here. I recognize that'll be it'll be two weeks after the obviously two weeks after the second. Okay, so we have, we're, again, we're scheduled for July 12th. And then uh, you're, you're, we can't meet on the 2nd. The 2nd, I think, works. Yeah. I think it's, the, we were suggesting the 23rd, but Mr. Walner indicated that date would not work for him. And I suggested we move it to the 16th instead. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So, um, We'll need both of those meetings, right? Probably we'll need both of those. Um, I, I expect we probably will. I mean, there's a possibility we won't need August 2nd. Um, I, I know there's a license. Um, I think it's an alteration of premises at one stop that uh, if, if it hasn't come in, it will be coming in any day. That we'll, we'll recommend taking up on July 12th. If we get any other licensing matters, um, we'll certainly you know deal with them. It's possible we won't need to. Is that a transfer license? I don't think it's a transfer. I think it's just a change of premises because I think they're adjusting their footprint up there. I, I believe. So the sixteenth. So second and sixteenth. The second and sixteenth is where I think we've landed. I won't be available for the second, but we're running into time frames that one or the other of us may not be available. I I won't be available on the second for sure, but you can still hold without me. Another alternative through you, Madam Chair, would be to so do July 12th and July 26th, and then August 16th. And was somewhat was there an issue with July 26th with one of the members? No. Didn't come up yet. I mean, I don't know yet. Yes. I don't know anything. <laughs> I'm not judge my social calendar. Actually, much of a calendar at all. And the need I usually get told when to be where I'm supposed to be. Maybe <laughs> that's. A so we, we we have gone down to one meeting a month in the summertime. Is there a necessity for us to have the two meetings in July? Not to my knowledge, Madam Chair. So can we at least, I mean, and that might help for us to pinpoint better sure. for the board. I know we're running up against the schedule in terms of the articles and things like that. So Could just go with August to July 12th and August 16th, if that yeah. okay. works for everybody. That works? Yep. Does and that work for everybody? And Madam Chair, through you, we were originally recommending the next meeting after that being Tuesday, September 7th, which is the Tuesday immediately after Labor Day, because we're not able to meet on Labor, the Labor Day holiday. Um, that would be the last day to sign the October Town Meeting Warrant so that it can be mailed to everybody's home for what we expect will be a, a modified date, currently scheduled for Saturday, October 2nd, but we're gonna be recommending it be moved to the um, traditional Monday evening, October 4th, indoors. Um, if the 7th is a challenge, and I know that can be a very busy week, and a, a fallback could be moving it up to August 30th, if that's what folks wanted to do. I'd rather do the 7th. I'd rather do the 7th. Okay. I won't be here for the seventh because um, I have a work. I have work commitment on Tuesdays, so I will. Not. Oh, that's right. That's why we don't do Um And also, we don't. You know, we can move the meeting around to any days, but I think it, so. We're needing to meet twice then for purposes of signing. We're needing to meet twice in in August for purposes of signing. No, the warrant. The warrant could actually be signed. I, I was suggesting Tuesday, September seventh. But if a better night would be the Wednesday, I think we could go with that night and still be okay to get it to the printer if the members were available. I can do Wednesday any night that week. Wednesday will work. Wednesday the 8th. Wednesday the 8th? Yeah. That's fine. Um, that will be trash day. <laughs> that will definitely be trash day, yes. Would there be an executive session or would it be just regular session? I just, I'm in Lexington on Wednesdays. It's a little more of a... 
Well, we can schedule. We can plan not to have an executive session if that works for the members. I'm just, I'm just wondering if we can plan our the August meeting closer to the date that you believe that we can have that a vote on that. In other words, sure. we're on the 16th. Is it better off for us to? I think the 23rd did not work, but we could, if we wanted to move it to the 30th, we could. We could do that. That just does give a. That's a long stretch, obviously, between the two meetings. It'll be like six weeks. Well, that's what. That's what I mean. Is that? Is that may be too long. I, I, just okay. if we get a, we're likely to get an application of some sort that has to be acted on. The 23rd didn't work. It didn't, but we said the 16th did, I believe. So no, the 23rd doesn't work for. Us. Doesn't work for me. Oh, okay. for you. Oh, okay. I didn't remember. Okay. Is the eighth an issue? One's there? No, I I can make it work. If this. Okay. I'll, I'll make it work if that works for everybody else. Or, or I mean, I it puts us right up against the deadline. But the Thursday is also an option if that would that be better. Works but for I know me. I know that doesn't. Wednesday work. I can work better than Thursday. Yeah, some of us have work commitments yeah. and things on those. Um, I can do Wednesday. Okay. Um, so, so the eighth is not too late to be signed. No, um, I, I, assuming which we are, I'm taking a bit of a leap here, but I believe we're all sort of in agreement on this. Um, moving the date to the October 4th, Monday, that gives us time if we sign it on that Wednesday. If we weren't changing that date, then we would have a problem. We would be up against it because we lose those two days. Right. But we should be okay. To get it to the printer and not right. up and be up, right? Correct. And did I already ask about the 30th? Is that not, I mean, um, wait a minute, let me just, August 30th, you, you're thinking that's too far Meeting once in July and then once in August. I think if you, I would just be concerned that we'll have something come up, you know, and we would be dealing with the warrant, you know, looking at the first draft of the articles, but also signing it the same evening. That's a lot, yeah, I think. Okay. Right. I, I mean, I'm, we're, I, I, I'm we're not expecting okay. anything right. too out of left field, but okay. one never knows. So, well, so let's keep July 12th, August 16th, and does the 8th work? Uh, you know, it works for me. I'll make it work. We won't be able to put five, six o'clock, seven. We, we really should keep it to a regular, it's not a regular meeting night for us. So right. we need to keep the regular meeting time <coughs> and not lump on in advance because some of us have work commitments that we're coming to. That if we're doing seven o'clock, I'll, I can't yeah. do that. If we're not doing mean, executive. Yeah. If, if there's a matter that requires executive session, Madam Chair, we can talk about an alternative date. Doing it in a different, yeah. yeah. Even a morning meeting, if it was required, if that worked better for folks virtually, if need be. We have plenty of options at this point, okay. obviously. Okay. So just a regular so meeting on September the 8th. September 8th. Yeah, there were more years when we did executive session at the end of the meeting. <laughs> no. Oh, we're we could do asleep. that. We were all asleep. Look at all this time right. it's taken us just to plan a meeting to schedule <laughs> once a month. All right. Okay, so then September we re will resume back to our regular twice. So the next one be the 20th? If yes, we're um, two Matt, weeks. Sorry, Madam Chair, through you to the board, we had suggested September seventh, which became September eighth. The customary meeting schedule date would call for the next meeting to be September twentieth, which is a Monday evening. Okay. Then, so that would also be the warrant article hearing for the October town meeting. Perfect. Town meeting would occur on Monday, October fourth, um, and we would presumably meet for town meeting purposes that evening with a regular meeting on Monday, August, uh, October 18th to follow. That's the third Monday. Okay. And then um, I know it's far out, but we looked at November 1st and 22nd. Those are also the first and four, fourth, first and fourth. Is that right? First and fourth. Meeting. September 8th and September 20th. Then October 4th for town meeting and October 18th. And then we were suggesting just going right through the year, November 1st yep. and 22nd. Um, I realize that's a three week gap in November. And the reason for that is we, we, we generally are not quite ready for a tax classification on November 15th, but waiting the following week to the 22nd will get us right before Thanksgiving. Somewhere in there, we need to do strategic planning. Mm -hmm. We missed it and I don't want us to miss sure. it again. May I just like throw in? Could I just throw out the December dates too? We had the same thing, first and third, December 6th, 
and um, and 20th as well. That's asking a lot. No, that's Just for everyone's calendars. And then, yeah, yeah absolutely. 12-6 and 12-20. Yes. And so no it's July 12th, August 16th, September 8th, September 20th, October 4th, October 18th, November 1st, November 22nd, December 6th, and December 20th. Yes, Madam Chair. We need a strategic planning meeting somewhere else in the near future because we're, we're needing to get back to that planning as a board for the town. Madam Chair, through you, in just in kind of in accordance with what we've customarily done, my suggestion is that we do a, a single planning meeting and that if the board members are, are, are amenable to it, maybe pick the Monday or the Wednesday of the week in September between the two regular meetings. So that would be the week of the 13th. I put that out as a starting date because we've customarily done it in the fall and I think we've actually done it that week. I, um, as September. I mentioned before. So that would be the week of September, excuse me, I just, I'm just I'm on my phone here unfortunately, September 13th. And I just threw out September 13th or 15th as possible dates if they worked. Um, Yelm Kapur is on. Thank you. I did, I did not realize that. On the 13th or 15th? 13th. 13th, 15th. 15th. The 15th would certainly work for me. 13th works. I can do the 13th. That's Monday, right? Yeah. You, you said the, the 13th is the holiday? Or the no, 15th. 15th. No, no, the 15th. The 15th is open. Okay, thank you. Joan Kapur is on. This, I'm sorry, so the 13th. I know this is far in advance, but does the 13th work for everyone? Yeah. I mean, and if, I know it's hard to say yes at this point, but if there's something that comes up, then we would make, maybe just need to address it and schedule. Mm -hmm. And that would be a night meeting, like a, like a regular meeting? And my recommendation would be an evening meeting starting at probably 6.30 in the police department training room. It's a different venue than, than in here. Um, we have plenty of room to spread out. We don't expect a large crowd for it. And uh, we would provide dinner for the members as well. Be an extra nice dinner. Extra nice? An extra nice dinner because we missed a dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so how's that? App appetizers, too. <laughs> I'll send you some suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, we'll, so that's our that's great. Great. Thank Excuse you to the members. Thank you. All right. Bless you. That's right. it. Bless that's, you. That's, that's far in advance and. Obviously, there's some flexibility in order for not knowing, not knowing everything that's going on with our schedule. Okay. Like that. All right, so now our, our next, do we have the school committee ready? Uh, I'm waiting to hear from them. I know they were expecting to be ready just about this time, and I've let them know that we're ready for them at any moment. So let's move on to minutes, if minutes. we can, while we, oh, while we can have blast maybe this. 30 mm -hmm. seconds. Madam Chair, I move to approve the April 26, 2021 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Madam Chair, I move to approve the April 26, 2021 executive session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve the May 5th, 2021 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to approve the May 10th, 2021 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to approve the May 10th, 2021 executive session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to approve the May 24th, 2021 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to approve the May 24, 2021 executive session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to approve the June 5th, 2021 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Report Certainly, I'm just pulling up the written report on my phone. <laughs> Another screen. It'll take a moment. It'll take a moment to download. <laughs> Another screen. How many screens you get going? I get. There's a lot there. August second. Uh, August second is. No, not in. Just August sixteenth. For me, right. you yeah. missed me, right. Mr. I'll miss you all. <laughs> you can meet without me. <laughs> I'll miss you all. But <laughs> Send us a postcard. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair, and bear with me as I look at my screen here. Uh, Police Sergeant Anthony Merlani has informed Chief Murphy of his intention to retire from his full-time position with the town effective July 6, 2021. At the recommendation and the request of Chief Murphy, I intend to appoint Sergeant Merlani to the position of Reserve Police Officer. Um, please see the attached memorandum from Chief Murphy for more information. This is very similar to what happened with, with former Lieutenant uh, Brennan, who is actually serving the town quite well in his capacity as a Reserve <coughs> Police Officer. Secondly, and um, I know we had hoped that we would be able to consult with the board prior to submitting the formal application for federal ARPA funding, but I received a, uh, a second notice, if you will, from the state and didn't want to lose the opportunity. So we have formally applied for American Rescue Plan <coughs> Act funding through the designated Commonwealth of Massachusetts process for the town. We anticipate a uh, transfer of the first portion of the funds in the coming week or so. Our total estimated grand total um, that we expect to receive is just over $4.7 million in federal funding. And I attached some information for the, for the board and we'll probably have a more detailed discussion at a future meeting. But um, there's some pretty good guidance that's come out from the Mass Municipal Association and I know you get all of their emails from it as well as some information that came out as recently as today from the Treasury regarding the use. There was a grant contract, it was very straightforward. Um, really all they wanted to do is just know that we agreed to the terms and conditions um, that they require for most federal grants. And I included a copy of that in there as well, and I don't believe it's inconsistent with anything that we've agreed to um, for our federal grant that we get from uh, the Youth Substance Abuse um, Prevention Program. So um, it's in the works, and we're expecting to get a transfer through the normal transfer process that our local aid comes to, and um, expect that that will happen in the coming week or so. Um, and my final note, um, and she was not able to be here this evening, but we do have a new recording secretary, secretary as the board members know. Her name is Jennifer McNeil. She is uh, a longtime, if not lifelong, resident of North Reading. Um, very happy to have her as a candidate for the position to uh, fill both the day job, if you will, of secretary to the select board, but also the evening recording secretary position. Um, she had a scheduled vacation um, at, during this week, and um, although she asked to be able to participate virtually, um, she, uh, I declined to accept the offer. <laughs> and uh, she's enjoying her vacation, although she may actually be watching us uh, this evening. And uh, she will catch up on the minutes um, upon um, her return. Um, and as you saw, just from the minutes you went through, she, there were a number that she was involved in going through. We made quite a bit of headway in recent weeks on those minutes, and I, that is a credit to, to Jen, and we're happy to have her with us here in, uh, in Town Hall. Um, and that concludes my report, and I've also gotten a note that the school committee will be with us uh, momentarily. So not done yet, but recessing. Be there in five. So okay. right. if you want to start board member reports? Yeah, that sounds great. Right. Um, well, let's do all the new employees. Well, because I just like a comment. Uh, uh, Mr. Studo, oh, I'm sorry. The announcement time yes. of uh, Tony, yes. Mal Tony yes. Milani. I mean, uh, again, born and raised in North Reading, and uh, 20 years, 20, something like that. At least, yeah. Yeah, maybe 30 years um, service to the uh, North Reading Police Department. Uh, terrific member of uh, the community, and been very active, uh, and uh, done an outstanding job and promoted again uh, during his career here. Uh, very devoted, and, and, and with wishing nothing but uh, good health and 
long, happy, and healthy retirement. Uh, grateful that he's willing to serve on the reserve force because that's uh, certainly needed. He has a hard time filling all the shifts and the uh, details to it. But terrific fellow, nice family, and uh, I'm happy for him. And, uh, great. Briefly again, Board of Health about the fifth evening, and they were uh, again looking to rescind their uh, their previous orders, which again is a a wonderful thing. Uh, but again, they're going to be ever vigilant, and again, we appreciate all of their efforts and time uh, during the past several months in addressing the needs of the community. Uh, Hillview again, uh, again, the town administrator can give us a better idea as far as the dates, but uh, again, request for proposals for the use of the facility. Uh, will be if they have not already been put out. Uh, that, that's correct. I believe they're going to the newspaper Thursday and will be available at the end of this week. Yeah. So again, uh, there was some interest in uh, the first outreach that they made, but it wasn't, uh, but again, it was just for the pub. And it appears that there was more interest in the pub and the functional <coughs> facility, surprisingly enough. That's good. Um, which is a good thing. And uh, you know, hopefully uh, that can be come to fruition, something comes of it. Because again, as we recall the town meeting from the revenue forecast while well, golf was up, uh, revenues to support the uh, cost of the facility itself were down significantly because we were unable to collect the rents and uh, make the license agreement uh, early. And so the cost associated with maintaining the facility falls directly on the enemy without the revenue stream. So as soon as we get that up and going again, all the better for, uh, for the enterprise. But again, same thing for the commission, uh, for their willingness to be adapting to the uh, the changing times during the last 14 months or so, 16 months. Uh, they've done a terrific job, yeah, more regularly than usual, and uh, again, managing the facility very well for us. So, uh, other than that, we're all set. Just uh, it's great to be back. Great to be with my colleagues here at the same table, and uh, hope everybody. Everybody stays safe and stays, uh, stays healthy. It's continues to improve. And it's great to be back. Uh, this is a little bit better venue than the, than the Zoom. <laughs> Thank you. Madam Mr. Chair. Waller? Madam Chair. I do see the members of the, of the school committee are all here. Okay. All right. Do we want to just finish? Yeah, I might as well. No, okay. I don't. Okay. Um, and just briefly, um, the Forest Committee got together last week. We had to get together in a year and a half. That was really nice to do that. I think we're the first committee to do live, right? You so were, yes. Right here. Um, and so Dana Rose, still the chair, uh, we, uh, they re voted him in. And then we had a new addition to our group, Allison Polito, who's a recent resident of town, last three years, and she knows all about forest management and how to take care of trails and how to make things happen. So I just took our notes and she's already rocketed to make things happen. So we have a huge agenda and looking forward to making the uh, Swan Pond area really accessible and known and available to everybody in town, which is kind of exciting to be able to do. Um, Martin's Pond Committee met with um, the Conservation Commission to make sure that, uh, that they were okay with the, um, the chemical treatments we're in making with the pond. They did have two hearings on that. On the last one, the Conservation Committee approved that. We're doing the survey on the pond, and I have to say the pond has never looked more choked than it does right now. So I see it every day. So it can't come a moment too soon. So they're they're going as fast as they can to make that happen. Um, I think that's all. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I just want I just have to report uh, the EDC uh, business summit we had great success. Uh, a lot of the board members were there. I appreciate it and. Uh, People were excited to get out, you know, sharing of ideas, but just, you know, wanted, you know, I met a lot of people. Uh, I know I, I came on, this is the first, uh, you know, meeting I'm doing in person, but I wasn't able to meet a lot, so that was that was good for me. But I feel like every everyone who went said the same thing. I mean, if, the, if these were happening bi-weekly, people, because they had been so far like apart, would probably show up, where before maybe our participation level wouldn't be as high. So we don't know when the next one will be or how it will be, but I feel like it just showed that 
you know, people are ready to get back to business. And, um, you know, we're at a place now where I feel like, I mean, personally, I feel like the comfort level for people is sky high based on what I've seen anyways, where I've been. So, you know, just wanted to mention that. And then uh, that's it. I'm excited to have my first board meeting in person that's after right. a while. Yeah. Welcome right. aboard to the table. Welcome to the table. Welcome to the table. That's right. A, yes. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything, Mrs. Gonzalez? Uh, yes, quickly. Yeah, I will go over the recycling committee. Um, Dan Greenberg working hard on the IQ kit, which is um, being done with grant money. Um, um, talking about separating the municipal trash from the resident, pay as you throw ideas. We're talking about um, textile curbside recycling, compost curbside recycling, so a lot going on there. Um, the CIT community impact team. Um, Dr. Daly spoke about the vision protocol for 2025 and hopefully people filled out those forms and will be involved, I believe that's tomorrow night. Um, and house number awareness, very important that people have visual house numbers for the fire and police um, to find your house, that it, it can be a problem if you don't. Um, sticker shock, where they put the stickers in the um, liquor stores so that people can, it, it tells them the consequences of buying for underage. Um, they're loud and proud on those. Um, doors. National Night Out unfortunately was postponed again this year. Hopefully we'll have it back next year. And um, just want to bring awareness to a mel mental wellness action team mindfulness series being done with Laura Miranda at the library. Um, you can look it up on the website to see when they're doing that. Thank you. Mr. Gilberto, do we have a hearing notice for our joint meeting that needs to be read into the record? No. No, okay. So let us uh, go backwards now to uh, the joint meeting with the school committee and appointment to the secondary, appointments for secondary school building committee. I can't see Mr. Gil Gilberto, so I can see, but I can't see who's intended. Do you mind naming the members that I'm joining? Sure. Um, through you, Madam Chair, uh, to Mr. Buckley, can you all hear us? We can hear you. You need a better phone. <laughs> I heard about the bath phone over there. We have to get one to your standards. Um, with Mr. Buckley is uh, Ms. Imbriano, uh, Ms. Boutwell, Mr. McGowan, and Mr. Papa Vasilio. Um, so it is all of the members of the school committee. And through you, Madam Chair, to the members of the school committee and the members of the select board, we, uh, the superintendent and I have been in some conversations <coughs> and we have prepared a motion for three appointments for the customary indefinite terms. Those appointments are to replace the, um, to, to fill vacancies uh, created by the retirement <coughs> of the superintendent of schools, the retirement of the school facilities uh, manager, and the retirement um, of a former school committee member, uh, Venezia. There is a motion that's been prepared for joint consideration um, I believe that the school committee has also recommended these appointments in a memorandum that was conveyed to us going back probably six weeks at this point, I believe, but I'll, I'll ask Mr. Buckley to just speak to that if he wants to. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's not much to say. I mean, Mr. Bernard has moved on to greener pastures <laughs> and Mr. Venezia has as well and the facilities manager and so MDSSPC is still up and running until everything is resolved. We need to have members on there, and so other members are willing to step up and take those positions. Great. Okay. This is called the closing team. These are the closers. <laughs> Mr. Buckley, you're coming in as the closer. <laughs> Hopefully, right? Okay. All right. So should we call the motion then? Oh, yes. There's no other in, no, nothing further? All right. So Mr. 
Mr. Studo. Madam Chair, I move to jointly appoint the following individuals as members of the Secondary School Committee, Dr. Patrick Daly, Andrew Campagna, Scott Buckley. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary, and I'll call the roll for the select board, Mr. O'Leary. Okay, let me just see who was it the, uh, Oh, Dr. Dr. Buckley, Dr. Daly. Dr. Yes, Dr. Daly. Mr. Campania. Andrew Campania. Mr. Campania. Scott Buckley. And, oh, and of course, Mr. Buckley. <laughs> Mr. Ballner. Okay, I got two out of three. Scott Buckley, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Daly, who is Mr. Campania. Mr. Campania. Mr. Campania. Mr. Campania. Mr. Campania. Mr. Studo. He has it in front of us. Dr. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Daly, <laughs> Andrew Campania, and Scott Buckley. Ms. Gonzalez. Dr. Daly, Mr. Campagna, and Scott Buckley. And uh, I'm Mandy Pelley, Dr. Daly, Mr. Buckley, and Mr. Campagna. And to will the chair, Mr. Mr. Buckley, Buckley will you call, call the roll, roll for the school committee? Yes, I can call the roll. So we need a roll call vote on who to appoint the SSBC. <coughs> I'll start with Chris Papagasilio. You say the name of the three names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Daly, Mr. Buckley. Mr. Campania. Campania. <laughs> okay, Mr. McGowan. Dr. Daly, Mr. Buckley, Mr. Campania. Mrs. Butwell. Campania. Mrs. Embriano. Mr. Buckley. And I vote for Dr. Daly, Mr. Buckley, and Mr. Campania. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, through you to Mr. Buckley, um, or perhaps to the superintendent of schools, we will have uh, signed appointment slips, which I believe Mr. Studo is signing right now. Um, they'll be available here in, uh, in my office, and the members can come grab them and uh, be sworn in in the town clerk's office. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. And I'm up to date on everything. Madam Chair, you may want to ask the chairman why he's keeping us so late. <laughs> I know. Well, we're, uh, we're keeping that, I think, at this point. Are you going back to reconvene, Mr. Chair? We do have to reconvene again. Re reconvene again. So, all right. We're talking about committee wow. for a long time. So we have very long meetings. You, we're we ahead of you. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. The wonders of modern technology and virtual meetings in, in operation. So, hopefully, you can wrap up soon. I have the motion. <laughs> we, we will. We will plan to. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll be planning out. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. It's a long meeting. I know. Yes, it is. What are they talking about? <laughs> now I'm curious. All right. And, and Mr. Gilberto, anything else? Down down. Uh, <laughs> Ma Madam Chair, through you, Mr. O'Leary has reminded me that um, there is a, a senior barbecue. It'll be an indoor barbecue over at Hillview that Mary is in the process of um, pulling, uh, pulling together. Uh, I believe she's gone through a registration process already, but folks can check with the Council on Aging to confirm. And I believe the date is June 24th for the uh, lunchtime barbecue which is a great thing for us to be able to have. We have the facility that's available. The commission has graciously um, made the facility available despite the fact that it does not have an operator right now. So we greatly uh, appreciate that. Great, that's great. And with that, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Madam Chair, I move to adjourn. Second that. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. All right. Okay.